people are interested in quick fixes. Quick fixes for their life's troubles, whether it's quick fix for monetary problems, quick fix for relationship problems, quick fix for all these things. So we have a parasha, Parashat Kitisa. That's the weekly Torah portion that talks about a lot of different things. One of them most famously known as the golden calf. So how are we going to connect the two? We're going to connect the two, Bezat Hashem, and give you guys some quick fixes for your life. If you simply listen carefully, you're going to get a lot of quick fixes. Quick fixes that uh, can transform your life uh, into uh, literally a heaven. Heaven on this, uh, on this earth. But those that don't listen, those that log off, those that uh, you know make it like background music, you're not going to benefit out of it. So we have in the beginning of the parasha, beginning of parashat Kitisa, a uh, one of the things that we implemented in Purim, which is the machatita shekel. Now the whole concept of giving this specific amount of money, uh, we learned from there that Hashem doesn't necessarily always want the rich people to be the ones that stand out when it comes to charity. Uh, so this specific tzedakah, no matter how rich or poor a person is, uh, that it says, the verse says in uh, chapter uh, 30, verse 15 in Exodus, the wealthy will not increase and the destitute shall not decrease from the half a shekel. Meaning that this is a specific mitzvah that Hashem instituted that He wants everybody to give the same exact amount. But even more than that, we learn that uh, this, the whole purpose behind this mitzvah was for the sake of uh, doing a census, counting how many Jews there are in the desert, how many Jews, Hashem's chosen people, are there, uh, which uh, we're actually being warned not to count Jews. Uh, and this is uh, a, a something specific that Hashem Himself says, it's against the evil eye. Now, if you would say that uh, somebody would do something specific, if he's counting his money a lot, if he's uh, doing all these different things that uh, telling people about how successful he is, she tells about people how uh, great her husband is, and all of a sudden they see an evil eye from people and they see that their, t their luck is turned, Okay, I can understand that, you know, evil eye is very much a real thing, and it affects people. That's why you shouldn't necessarily talk so much about your life to people, even though that's the number one topic of conversation. Aside from talking about other people's lives, that's what people like to talk about. Which, as I always say, talking about other people's lives is the lowest form of conversation. Reason why is because it simply shows that you have no brain in your head, that you can't talk about anything intellectual. So people like to talk about other people's lives, what celebrities do, how much uh, money they make, where they went. And in essence, people try to live through other people's lives vicariously to other people's lives, which in essence shows that there's nothing in their brain. But at the same token, people also like to talk about their own life. Oh, I went here, I went there. This is really the whole concept of social media is built off of that. People show what they eat, where they went, how they act, what they wear, and everyone that is old enough, mature enough, knows that the whole thing is an illusion. Nobody lives like that. Nobody really acts like that. Nobody really talks like that, but it's all a show. So we've all, in essence, agreed to live this showboat type of life in order to be part of this social media. The Torah tells us otherwise. The Torah tells us that if you're going to do that, you're going to bring a bad, bad fortune upon yourself. In fact, even if you are counting something that's good, like you're counting righteous people, you're counting good people, it's still something you should be very careful in. And therefore, a person has to do it in a specific manner. So if someone goes to synagogue and they want to count to make sure that they have at least 10 people that are uh, Torah observant so they can have a minyan, they don't count the people, they count uh, the shoes, they count uh, the shirts, they count something that is a not a person uh, in order not to bring bad luck. And this is something that even Hashem himself uh, says that uh, he wants us to do. Why would Hashem need to do this? I mean, he is God. He's not limited. He's not subject to bad fortune. He's not doing it. He's not telling us to do it because he is subject to bad fortune, but rather because we are. Since we're doing the counting, there is rules in the world that Hashem instituted. You know, you have the physical rules such as gravity and all the physics that's out there, but you also have the spiritual rules. And some of these rules are things that a person needs to know about. The first and foremost is 
don't count specific things on a regular basis if you must count in order to make sure to make a payment no problem if you must count in order to make sure that you're precise on some type of measurement no problem but what people do often is that when they like something when something is important to them they count it over and over again almost like an obsessive type of thing and that in itself brings bad fortune on a person so it's important for a person to avoid that